Hi, this is the DMC machine. I created this to be an all-purpose driver for both standard and cartridge needles with no confusing tuning. It will line, it will shade, pack, stipple, whip shade, uh, whatever, whatever you can do with your hand. It is meant to be an effortless tile tattoo machine. So unlike a normal rotary where you have to bury the needles to get them to go in, this is a very off the tip finesse style machine. It comes out of the box um, set up for standard needles and that you can tell because there will be return spring tension on the armature bar. To make it cartridge friendly, take the 1.5 millimeter Allen key that I provide, put it in this hole right down here and back out that set screw all the way until it stops or until you don't feel any more return spring tension. With a cartridge, you don't need a lot of rubber band tension, uh, just enough to keep the um, needle bar from flopping around. I prefer a rubber band style membrane, or a, a rubber band style cartridge versus a membrane style, just because I, I like the tension of them more, um, especially with the mechanism of this machine. Uh, if you need, if, you're, if your machine is struggling to turn over because of the too much tension, you can always use another rubber band and go around the armature bar to help pull down the needle. For standard needles, again, I will take my 1.5 millimeter Allen key I'm going to engage the return spring by turning the screw in all the way. Okay. Um, with a standard needle, I prefer the number, the thicker number 28 rubber band. A number 27 will work as well, and that's a more common size. They're just a little bit on the small side as far as like diameter, but they'll work. This is number 28 I got from postalbands.com. Uh, I like the ones that are closest to most commercially pure rubber that you can get because of the most durable and uh, retain their stretchiness longer. Um, if you need more rubber band tension, say the machine is uh, chattering a little or maybe spitting a little, you can just pull the rubber band and twist it and you can get more tension. And then you can kind of even pull on the band at this point and, and suck it, suck the needle back more. You just wanna make sure that you're not covering up your clip cord hole. Okay, let's run this guy. This is gonna be on the passive side, which I prefer for, um, for shading and finer lines. Still has a nice punch to it. Um, now you'll see here when I, this is on the harder setting. Now, if your clip cord is marked properly, it'll be positive side up. Not all clip cords are marked properly though. Um, some people don't understand that the red is supposed to signif signify that that is the positive lead. But most people get it right. Another thing that I did with this machine was I tapered the clip cord holes so that the clip cord, when you seat it, you can put it in whatever position you want and it will stay right there. One more thing that I did with this machine is I made it to where the thumb screw is ambidextrous. So all you do is remove this screw, which retains the vice sleeve, and you remove the thumb screw and you flip flop them. And then you can put the thumb screw on this side, retaining screw would go on that side. This retaining screw also doubles as another clip cord screw in case that hole wears out. Um, I prefer running this between four and a half and six and a half volts. When it's fresh out of the gate, more like no more than six volts, but the motor will break in and require just a little bit more voltage to get it to that same speed. It's totally normal. Um, 
It is a cordless motor made by Fallhaber, and all cordless motors that I've used have had that element to them. Um, but it's still good. It's um, uh, it's a nice, small, strong motor for a very powerful machine. Thanks for watching.